And now let's meet the man who knows all about pulps. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Tony Goodhart. Number two. My name is Tony Goodhart. Number three. My name is Tony Goodhart. Well, now we got a problem, friends. Everybody take one step back, close the curtain, and we're going to start all over again. Everybody take one step back. It's, this is what you'll figure out what happened. Let's close the curtain. All right. Now, let's, you ready to pull it up again? Let's meet the man who knows all about pulps. Number one. What is your name, please? My name is Tony Goodstone. Number two. My name is Tony Goodstone. Number three. My name is Tony Goodstone. <laughs> Can you imagine three guys that don't even know what their name is? Anyone of the three of them? All right, here is Tony Goodstone's story. I, Tony Goodstone, am an authority on pulp magazines. In the period from 1896 to 1953, countless hundreds of magazines thrilled their readers with lurid and fantastic tales whose setting was solely in the far-flung corners of the imagination. They covered every range of subject, science fiction, detective stories, westerns, the supernatural, horror, war, the superhero, and sex. I have compiled and edited material from these magazines into a book titled The Pulps. It contains over 50 complete stories, poems, and features, as well as 100 color covers of the magazines themselves. Here is Argosy, founded in the year 1896, and the famous Shadow. A 1912 all-story magazine featured Tarzan, and of course for years Doc Savage was a big favorite. Daredevil Aces and Spicy Detective were two other popular pulps, as were Dime Western and Amazing Stories. The cover of Amazing Stories looks like a cover of today, but it's actually an issue from 1929. Unquestionably, the pulps contain some of the best uh, adventure fiction ever written in America, and a lot of the worst, too. But, best or worst, the pulps appeal to such diverse personalities as gangster Al Capone and former President Harry S. Truman. Signed, Tony Goodstone. <laughs> All right, let's start the question with Peggy Cass, please. You. Number two, could you tell me some of the poets that were published in your magazine, in your anthology? Um, H.P. Lovecraft, Richard Legallian. Oh, but number three, uh, in which magazine would Lovecraft have appeared? Love Stories. Love Stories. Lovecraft would have been in Love Stories? Uh, okay. Um, number, number one, uh, were all pulp magazines ten cents? No, some were five cents. Oh, were any more? Some were 15, but most of them were 10. Was number three, was Spicy Detective really like, I mean, that was pretty pale compared to what's on the stands today, I take it. Oh. Well, yes, the pictures were a little bit more interesting, but the stories stopped at the kiss. Oh, they stopped at the kiss? <laughs> <laughs> and from Peggy, we go to Bill Cullen. You know, <laughs> we used to get Spicy Detective surreptitiously when we were younger, my wife and I, no, when I was a kid. <laughs> and, and we used to sneak sneak them in places like upstairs and under the car and now as you said they're nothing they are nothing compared but let's get number two to bill boyd and his battle aces what what branch of the service number two was bill boyd in he was a whiz bang not the cowboy That's bill a, boyd maybe that wasn't his name i'm very bad at names well, he's it? very bad at names too someone over is there over is there. pretty bad at names <laughs> as i uh, actually uh, what were some of the no, no. Number three, does the name Bill Boyd and his battle aces mean anything to you? I think you have the wrong name, but I think you're talking about the air aces, the daredevils during the World War I. Hey, speaking of wrong name, number one. Uh, <laughs> Bill, we're going to go from you to Nancy Dickerson. I sure am. Yeah. Number two, did you have any trouble with copyrights getting this all, all these compiled into one book? Well, it was a lengthy procedure. Oh, yes, there's always that possibility. What possibility? What that 
people who do not want to relinquish their rights to the books that you want to use. What, did you have such a problem? Yes. With which one? I can't tell you. Uh, number two, when, did the, when was the book published? Uh, the book was published November 24th. How's it selling, number three? Very well. We're very pleased. Hang on, answer. Let's go to Larry Blyden. Number one, I used to get thrown out of the drugstore for hanging around and reading Spicy Detective. Will you tell him to stop that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, number one, does Pop have to have a story? Yes. Okay, some of it was very poor writing, but there was also some very good writing. Okay, number three, did uh, Mark Twain ever write for Pulp? No, you're thinking of another era. I am? Okay, then, speaking of eras, when was Captain, Willie's, uh, Captain Billy's whiz-bang? When was that? During what period? Number, th th number three. Oh, that's in the 18, uh, 1900s. Okay, and number one, when, when was the, what was the period of Spicy Detective? When did that start? That was the late 20s, early 30s. Yeah, I know when it ended, sadly enough. I just wondered how long it had been going on. Well, thank you, Larry. If you were sitting over here on the panel, you'd have to vote. And you'd have to vote for number one, or for number two, or for number three. We pay $50 for each wrong vote, $500 if none of the votes is correct, and Peggy Cass starts, please. Well, I know you're all going to think I'm crazy. Oh, yeah. Because that fellow should have known his own name. But isn't Lovecraft a spooky writer? It seems to me that I've read Lovecraft, and he wasn't a poet. He was a spooky, spooky writer. And he wouldn't have been in a Western. So I voted for number one. You? You voted for number one? Yes. Very well. Let's go to Bill Cullen. Well, could number one possibly have come out and, and told us his wrong name, if he was a real one? I don't know. He might have forgotten us. <laughs> well, I think... I think a vote for number one is ill-advised. Oh, he voted for number one, too! <laughs> you both voted for number one? Yes! Nancy Dickerson, is there hope? How straight is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is number three. Oh, that's good. You gotta vote for number three. Larry Blyden, what are you going to do? Well, what is Nancy new? She's, she's new around here. <laughs> You mean number one comes out first and says the wrong name and he gets three votes? I love Nerves a spooky writer. Nerves does funny things to people sometimes. I called you Bill Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I know you did, Alice, writer, but that's no excuse. <laughs> Will the real Tony Goodstone please stand up? Come on. Hey! Congratulations, Tony. You got lucky, my friend. 500 bucks for all of you. Number, th number one, you got, in spite of everything, he got three wrong votes. What is your real name and what do you do? My name is Dr. Vincent Linder. Dr. Linder, how many times have you been on this show yourself? Three times. Three times? One says yourself and another time as an imposter, right? I've been a liar three times. He's been three times an imposter and nobody recognizes He's not learning. Number three, who got one wrong vote, sir. How many times have you been on this show? Five. Holy He's been macro. on this show five times as an imposter and still unrecognized. And Tony, you yourself, the real Tony, who really wrote the book. How many times have you been on the show? Oh, three. three times. Boy, are we dumb. Boy. Formally, this is dumb, dumb day. Yeah. yeah. Well, Tony Goodhart, <laughs> it's been a... <laughs> Oh, number three, we didn't ask you your name, sir. I'm terribly sorry. Thank you very much. All right, then what else do you do? <laughs> My name is Christopher Darrow, and I'm still the national brand manager for Dubonnet Wine. Oh. That's a good job. <laughs> and my name is Steve Allen, and I want to thank you all very much for being here with us on To Tell the Truth. Thank you, Jeff.